Hi, this is Steve from YourCreativeLife.com talking today about what writers do on set. And I'm continuing uh, this conversation that I started in the previous video about what happens on set. Uh, I'm here in Vancouver, British Columbia, where the show that I work for uh, shoots. Uh, that is Tracker, brand new CBS show that is about to premiere at the taping of this uh, video. Uh, but maybe by the time you see it, it will be on the air. Uh, who knows? But in any case, I wanted to talk about my experience. I'm just wrapping it up being here for about two weeks as the writer on set. And interestingly enough, often uh, a writer on a show like me on this show will come up for his or her own episode to be involved in pre-production and then production of that particular episode will create and build a bond with the director and be involved in all aspects of the way that particular episode unfolds. Now, other times, like what I'm doing now, a writer like me will come up and be involved in an episode or episodes that he or she did not write. So here I have been up for two episodes, uh, one uh, that you know was finishing shooting. So I did about two or three days on one particular episode again that I did not write. And then, and then um, stuck around for the changeover, a brand new director coming in who's done a week of pre-production and working with that director on a, a totally different episode, again, that I did not write. So what is it that a writer who either wrote the script or didn't write the script would be doing? What would that person be doing? On, uh, on a show and being on set. What does that mean for a particular writer? So here are the things, the overarching things that writers on set manage. Number one is the words. I am here, if I'm the writer on set, to manage and uh, be the uh, buck stops here guy for the words uh, that are on the page. And you know that means some different things because some of the time, uh, the words, um, you know, let's say you have a particular uh, show where people are, you know, there are a lot of words to learn. And it's not necessarily like the writer on set is making sure that everybody is word perfect. There is a person who, and as I mentioned this in the previous video, uh, I think I did, who is the script supervisor. And the script supervisor is the man or woman who is both looking out for continuity, uh, you know, this person's wearing a blue shirt here and they continue to wear the blue shirt or in in the show it's this it's tuesday and now it stays tuesday and now it's wednesday so the script supervisor does that kind of stuff uh in addition to a whole bunch of different things like um you know make notes about what the good takes are if the director says that's a really good take or also like make notes about where the special effects might go or any other of those sorts of things. But the other thing that the script supervisor does is that person is the person who will give the line to the actor if the actor calls for a line or will you know look at the take and say, oh, you know, I'm gonna go up to that actor and remind them that this word is, you know, what is in the script, but they've strayed a little bit, you know, and are doing this or that. So there is a person who manages that space, but the writer is the authority of that space. And what I mean by that is there are certain things in a particular story that unless they're said in a particular way, they don't give the same story impression that we writers in the writer's room want. And a representative from the writer's room is really the only person who can say, what the writers intended. So even that script supervisor might see something on the script, but also not understand exactly why this particular word or this particular phrase or this particular whatever is really important. But the writer, a writer, uh, is the person who will give that kind of information and therefore be the arbiter of which things sort of need to be said in a particular way. Um, and we're not talking about ifs or thes or those sorts of things, but things that really turn the story, things that are really key. So the writer, 
me in this case, is in charge on some level of the words. Also, the flow of the scene. So as a writer on set, I might know that a particular scene should flow in a particular way, that these two characters should behave in a particular way. I'm perhaps the only person on set who will know, uh, or any writer, who will know that three episodes from now, these two characters are going to fall in bed or fall in love or, you know, whatever, or, you know. And so because I know the future, I can be very helpful to the production and tell the actor, the director, uh, and other people that this scene ought to be played in X fashion because they might not have that information because they don't know what's coming up in three to five to six to two whatever episodes, but the writer does. So the words and the flow of the scene are the first two things that a writer on set like me will be there to manage. The other thing is the motivation or intention of an actor. I can know why we put a scene in there in the first place and therefore what the values are, the dramatic values that need to be sort of brought to the surface. And I'm perhaps the only person who can say that with authority. Now, a director uh, may bring that kind of information to the fore, but there are directors in television and film who are not as concerned or not as aware of the process of actors, you know, who might be more interested in the visuals and television's a visual medium. That's certainly an important thing to be aware of, but it doesn't necessarily encounter, encapsulate the kinds of things that we as writers know this scene needs to feel like this. This, you know, this character, this thing needs to happen in this way or should feel blah, 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 was written to be threatening or is written to be funny or not to say that you can't, that nobody can figure that out. But again, the writer on set comes with a certain authority about knowing what the intention was for that we created that scene and therefore can give that to the actors in terms of the intention and energy that they might bring to a scene. Then, so, so that's three things so far, words, flow of the scene and motivation or intention. The fourth one is extras. On our show and on many shows, there are all sorts of props. So my show, this show is a procedural show, and there are things where people say, this is the villain, and we see his or her driver's license and the mugshot and a whatever, this or that, or you know, a birth certificate, right? And uh, and perhaps somebody gets an envelope and in the mail, and right? So we who are writers get a chance to be uh, riding shotgun on some of those props. Many times during the two weeks that I was here working on our show, I would get a question from the props person. The props person would come up and say, we have two envelopes for this letter that so-and-so is gonna get. Do you like this one or do you like that one? You know, Do you want the yellow one or do you want the white one? Do you want the security envelope or do you want the manila envelope or should it be big or should it be small or what is, what do these files look like? That sort of thing. Now, many of those things get decided in pre-production, but some of them don't, and some of them just come with options. And so the writer on set is often the person, in addition to the director, if he's busy doing all the stuff that he or she needs to do, or they need to do in terms of, you know, setting and lighting and all that stuff, the writer on set may be the one to say, this prop feels more right to me, or this gun feels more right to me, or this knife feels more right to me, or whatever it is, this envelope. And that's another thing that writers will do on set for a particular show. So that's words, flow of the scene, motivation and intention, and the extras like props or those sorts of details. The other thing that happens quite often on a television show is that there are changes. You can just imagine on my on my very first show, this actually happened. We set a, the, my very first show was Covert Affairs and we set an action scene, action set piece inside a parking garage. And our lead character needed to chase down somebody in a parking garage and there was a big confrontation there and it was all written out and very elaborate on the page. 
And then when we got to the location, when we got to Toronto, which is where we were shooting that particular show, and the location team went out to find the location, they could not find a parking garage that suited what we wrote or that was available, <laughs> getting that thumbs up, that automatic thumbs up, uh, that suited what we wrote or was available for our show. And that meant that we needed to switch locations and that the scene needed to be rewritten based on the location. So once again, that's a thing that as the writer on set, I got to do was to rewrite that sequence in a brand new location, which for us was a, um, a mechanics uh, sort of garage. Very small, very different, uh, but it had a different kind of nuance. And still we wanted all the story values to stay the same. So how do we create that, what was in this huge parking garage to be now in this smaller uh, mechanics garage? And as the writer on set, I was in charge of doing that. So those are some of the things that we do uh, as, as a writer on set. Uh, dealing with the words, dealing with uh, dealing with the intentions and motivations, dealing with the extras, dealing with changes, all of these things happen and make having a writer on set something that is very valuable to the production, as you can see. Uh, the other thing is that we are, as writers on set, representatives of the showrunner. So if there's something that our showrunner might want to know or want to chime in on, we're there to A, answer questions that, you know, might come about, you know, somebody might say, well, what is the future of this? You know, when an actor might say, what's the future of my character in terms of this woman and how do I, right? So as the actor on set, as the writer on set, I would say, I would comment on that or, uh, you know, or I would handle that or, I would get the showrunner on the phone to have a discussion with people to settle something specific. Uh, and for me, and I think this is a really great thing if you're out there and you've never been on set before, I think one of the really valuable things that I do every single day when I'm on set is I, at the end of the day, I send a note to my showrunner to let him or her or them know that uh, what happened, the basics of what happened, and my interpretation of what happened. Like, did things go well? Are there questions or problems that he or she or they need to know about? Uh, are there things that went particularly well with particular actors? Or are there things with the technical stuff that need to be aware, people need to be aware of when they go into editing? Is there stuff in the management space that needs to be handled or needs to be, people need to be aware of? All of that stuff is, uh, is, one of the many things that a writer on set will do. And I will say that why one of the reasons that that's really important from my perspective is that there's a certain aspect, uh, even with, you know, how responsible and how important this aspect, this job is to be the writer on set, there is an aspect of babysitting. You know, at the end of the day, it's not my show. And in these particular instances, in my two weeks here, it, it was not my episode ever. So I am babysitting. And if I'm doing that in real life, if I were sitting for somebody's kids and they were away for two weeks, it would probably not be a good idea to babysit for somebody for two whole weeks and not communicate with the parents, not give them updates, not give them any sort of progress reports, not bring them any sort of um, issues or compliments or successes or failures. It would be really not a good idea and not a good management of my babysitting skills to just handle everything and just wait till the parents come back to tell them about two weeks worth of babysitting, right? That just wouldn't make sense. So that's another thing that a writer on set does. So you can see how there are multiple things, multiple aspects that make this um, valuable, important, make a writer on set super busy uh, and key to the process. And as I said, among those things are handling the words, um, you know, dealing with uh, dealing with changes, dealing with the motivations of actors, things that other people don't know, dealing with props and other details, 
uh, and being the representative of the showrunner, uh, bringing back information, conveying information, all of those things in service to the storytelling of this uh, show that millions and millions of people are going to see uh, to keep it in integrity and to make sure that the show has sort of this energetic quality that really works. And of course, I say all of this, not to say that the writer on set does any of it alone. It's entirely collaborative, working very closely with the director, very closely with the uh, director of photography, very closely with the costumers and the props people and the actors and the special effects folks and just being there in this juicy collaborative energy with this entire team to bring forth a really good and entertaining television show. That's what the job is. So I hope you've gotten something good out of this and appreciated this video. If you have any questions at all, please leave them below in the comment section. Give it, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure you subscribe to this channel because every single week I bring some brand new coaching wisdom about writing and the writing life specifically in the television and film space. Check out yourcreativelife.com, which is where uh, my hub where through which I do my coaching to help people like you make sure your writing life is on par and on point and to make sure that you are leaning into your own creativity in a way that really, really works for you. Also on yourcreativelife.com, you can find out all sorts of information about my newsletter, the podcast, uh, this a link to this YouTube channel, and so much more. Uh, I thank you for watching. And I will definitely see you next time.